In this lesson, we'll discuss the signs and symptoms of prostate cancer. But first, let's talk about what prostate cancer is. So prostate cancer is a cancer of the prostate gland. And the prostate gland is going to be a male reproductive organ located at the base of the bladder. So if you look in this image here, here's the bladder. And we have the prostate gland below the bladder. So it's at the base of the bladder. And it is going to surround or encircle the urethra, which originates from the bladder. So if we look back at this image here, here's the bladder again, and the urethra originates from the bladder and goes all the way out through the penis, and the prostate gland is going to circle or surround the urethra. We can better see it in this image here. So the urethra going through and the prostate encircling it or surrounding it. Now it's important to point out that the prostate can grow and enlarge over time, and it doesn't have to be cancerous. It can be non-malignant growth, meaning that it would be the condition known as benign prostatic hyperplasia. This is going to be a very, very common condition, especially as male patients get older. But in some cases, it can be malignant. It can be a malignant process, which would be prostate cancer, which is what we'll discuss in this lesson. So there are many different risk factors for getting prostate cancer. These include country of residence, so Western countries, countries like United States, Canada, Australia, these are all going to have higher rates of prostate cancer than other countries, such as countries in Southeast Asia or South Asia or African countries. Age is also going to be another risk factor. So increasing age as a patient gets older, their risk of having prostate cancer increases. Ethnicity is also another risk factor. Males of African descent are going to be at the highest risk followed by males of European descent, and then the lowest risk will be in males of Asian descent. Genetics and family history will also be another risk factor as well, so having a BRCA1 or 2 mutation or having Lynch syndrome is also another risk factor. Obesity and metabolic syndrome is also another risk factor. There's a question of whether tobacco smoking is a risk factor, and there's some new research suggesting that changes in the gut microbiome may also play a role in increasing the risk for prostate cancer. There are other associated factors, but we won't discuss them in this lesson. So prostate cancer is going to be a very, very important cancer to understand because it is the most common cancer in males. And as we mentioned before, increasing age is going to be a risk factor. So the prevalence of prostate cancer increases with increasing age. So before we talk about the signs and symptoms of prostate cancer, it's important to talk about some brief pathophysiology of prostate cancer. So oftentimes the cancer is going to start in the periphery of the prostate gland and it will work its way inward toward the urethra and outward. This is going to be in contrast to benign prostatic hyperplasia, which starts in what we call the transition zone, which is a zone close to the urethra. So with regards to benign prostatic hyperplasia, we can often see issues with impingement on the urethra more so than in prostate cancer, unless it is advanced prostate cancer. And as the prostate cancer increases in size, so we can see it in the periphery, it can start to expand inward and outward. And in advanced prostate cancer, it can start to spread beyond the prostate and affect other organs. And it can ultimately spread and metastasize to bones. It has a predilection for metastasizing to bones, especially the spine and the hips and femurs. So those will be important bone sites, which we'll discuss later on in more detail when we talk about some of the signs and symptoms of advanced or late prostate cancer. So let's discuss some of the signs and symptoms of prostate cancer. It's important to note that this cancer is often going to be asymptomatic in early stages. It's not going to have any symptoms at all. So again, it's oftentimes going to start in the periphery of the prostate gland. So it won't really show or manifest any signs or symptoms unless the cancer starts a bit closer to the urethra, for instance. So a lot of the signs and symptoms we'll discuss will be occurring in later stages of the cancer. So some of these signs and symptoms include lower urinary tract symptoms or LUTs. These include urinary frequency, so increased frequency of urination. You feel like you have to go to the washroom more often, more frequently. It's often going to affect patients where they urinate many times per day. But despite increased urination, the urine volumes are going to be low. So it's not about so much that they're producing more urine where they feel like they have to urinate. It's because the cancer is pushing against the bladder. This is often going to be the reason we can see urinary frequency occurring in prostate cancer. Dysuria is also another finding that we may see in prostate cancer patients. So dysuria is going to be burning sensation when initiating urination. So when they first start urinating, there can be some burning sensation. 
Along with the urinary frequency we just mentioned, this may resemble a urinary tract infection. So a urinary tract infection, the hallmark symptoms of a urinary tract infection will be urinary frequency, urinary urgency, so feeling like you have to urgently go to the washroom, and dysuria or burning sensation when urinating. So a lot of times, at least these two symptoms can look like a urinary tract infection. Dysuria is going to be less common. Dysuria is going to be due to the cancer pressing on the bladder outlet or pressing on parts of the urethra. So it may feel like when you start urinating, there's a bit of a burning sensation when you get started. These two symptoms are going to be more common in benign prostatic hyperplasia than in prostate cancer, as I mentioned before. Benign prostatic hyperplasia will start closer to the urethra, whereas the prostate cancer is again going to start more in the periphery or the outside areas of the prostate gland. So it'll be a little bit further away from the urethra. So it won't often cause these symptoms, at least early on, it may cause them later on when the cancer is spread and starts to impinge on the urethra or starts to press on the bladder, as we mentioned here with urinary frequency. Another point to make note of here is that these symptoms may not be related to prostate cancer. They may simply be related to benign prostatic hyperplasia because patients may have both benign prostatic hyperplasia and prostate cancer. So that's also something to point out here as well. Some other important findings we can see in prostate cancer include nocturia. So nocturia is going to be nocturnal urination or urinating at night. So using the washroom at night more frequently. This is again going to be due to that cancerous mass pressing against the bladder. This is going to especially occur when patients lie down. So as I mentioned before, this will be similar to the urinary frequency mentioned before where the cancerous mass is pressing on the bladder. It makes you feel like you need to use the washroom more often. So that's also something to point out here as well. And then another important finding is urine stream disruption. So urine stream disruption is going to be either difficulty starting urination and or intermittent urine stream or difficulty maintaining a steady stream. So it might be hard to get going, maybe hard to start urinating, or it may be where you see your urine stream kind of going off and on. It'll be not steady, it'll be intermittent. Again, this is going to be due to the cancer pressing against the urethra. Now this is more likely going to occur in later stages. So as I mentioned before, cancer starts a little bit further away from the urethra and starts to move inwards and then starts to press on the urethra. So that's more likely to occur in later stages of prostate cancer. And it can also be a very common finding in benign prostatic hyperplasia. Another important finding is urinary retention. And so this is going to essentially be an extension of what we just talked about with regards to disrupted urine streams. So because the cancer is pressing against the urethra, if the cancer grows even more, it can completely occlude the urethra. So urinary retention may occur or an inability to urinate. Again, this is where the prostate cancer has grown so much that it starts to block or occlude the urethra. So in these patients, they will not even be able to urinate, or they may have very, very difficult time urinating. So they can often have a very full bladder and a painful bladder. And again, this is going to be due to essentially blocking the bladder outlet. So you're essentially blocking off the ability for urine to even exit the bladder. And then this can ultimately lead to another complication, which is known as acute kidney injury. And this acute kidney injury is going to be due to urinary retention. So even though the bladder is completely, completely full, the kidney is going to continue to make urine, even if the bladder is full. So what happens then is that because we can't release urine out of the bladder, the kidney continues to make urine, but then the urine starts to back up from the bladder, up the ureters, and into the kidneys, causing kidney damage. So that's why we can have acute kidney injury in cases of urinary retention, either from prostate cancer or from benign prostatic hyperplasia or from some other cause. So those are all going to be important with regards to this condition. Another finding we can see with prostate cancer is what we call hematuria, which is simply the term we use for blood in the urine. The blood can be microscopic or macroscopic. It can either be microscopic, meaning the patient doesn't see it. They would only have it detected on a urine dipstick or a urinalysis, or it can be macroscopic, meaning that the patient can see it. And macroscopic or gross hematuria is going to be more likely with prostate cancer. This can be a relatively common finding in prostate cancer patients. Up to 30% of patients may have hematuria. 
So often is due to damage to the prostate gland due to the cancer or the cancerous mass is bleeding and it's leading to bleeding into the urethra. And that's going to lead to hematuria. We can actually see blood in the urine. This is all going to be important findings in prostate cancer. Hematuria is not going to only be caused by prostate cancer. It can be caused by other conditions like kidney stones, can be caused by renal cell carcinoma, can be caused by urinary tract infections. So all these can be causes, but this is going to be a potential finding in prostate cancer. Now, there are potential sexual related issues in prostate cancer. These include hematospermia. So hematospermia is going to be essentially blood in the sperm. That's what that term hematospermia means, but it's more specifically red blood found in the ejaculate. So this is going to, again, be due to blood from tissue injury of the prostate gland or from the cancer. So it's either the cancer producing tissue injury in the prostate gland or the cancer is actually bleeding itself and, it's, and this blood is entering into prostatic fluids during ejaculation. Another finding can be erectile dysfunction. So there can be issues with achieving or maintaining an erection. And there can be painful ejaculation occurring as well. So pain during ejaculation. And the reason is because during ejaculation, prostate smooth muscle cells will contract to release prostatic fluid to mix with the ejaculate. So during that contraction, because there's a cancerous mass in the prostate, when the prostate is mildly contracting, there can be pain associated with that. Now, a lot of those findings we just talked about are going to be due to the fact that the cancer has spread enough where it starts to have signs and symptoms, but there are other findings that can occur when the cancer has spread even more in late stages of prostate cancer or when there is metastases due to the cancer. So all of these following signs and symptoms will be due to metastatic prostate cancer or late stage prostate cancer. So one is going to be weight loss. So it's going to be unintended weight loss, patients not trying to lose weight, and the weight loss is often going to occur over some months of time. There's multiple causal factors for the weight loss. These include loss of appetite, cancer-related cachexia. So cachexia is where the body changes its metabolism due to extreme chronic sickness. It starts to metabolize things differently, and it starts to utilize lots of calories. And it could also be due to the cancer itself utilizing nutrients. The cancer could be diverting nutrients away from the patient, utilizing them for its own growth. Those are all potential reasons for the weight loss in prostate cancer. Weight loss is often going to be common in many different types of cancer. Another finding we can see is anemia, which is low hemoglobin levels or low levels of red blood cells. Anemia can be due to multiple reasons. Some of these include bone marrow infiltration. Because the bones are a target site for metastases from prostate cancer, the prostate cancer can enter the bone, can infiltrate bone marrow and essentially destroy the bone marrow. And the bone marrow is where we produce red blood cells. So if we're not producing red blood cells due to damaged bone marrow, we're going to have low red blood cell levels. Systemic inflammation is also another potential reason we could have anemia. So in conditions where there is long-term systemic inflammation, this can lead to what we would call an anemia of chronic disease. And low testosterone levels may also play a role in anemia as well. So testosterone is important in red blood cell production, and a lot of times the prostate cancer, at least in early stages, utilizes testosterone. It'll essentially divert testosterone away from the patient and will utilize testosterone for its own growth purposes. So that can also lower systemic testosterone levels for the patient, and that can lead to anemia as well. Due to all these factors, there can be anemia in prostate cancer in late stages, and we can often see signs and symptoms of anemia including pallor, fatigue, presyncope, which is dizziness, lightheadedness, or fainting can also occur. These are all potential findings of anemia. Some other important findings of advanced metastatic prostate cancer include bone pain. So again, this particular cancer has a predilection for targeting bones, so it can invade bones. It can cause back pain and hip pain. Severe back pain can occur when the prostate cancer metastasizes to the spine, for instance. And in some cases, the cancer can be so pronounced in the bones that it can cause pathologic fractures to occur. And we can also see in some cases spinal cord compression. So if the cancer grows enough in the spinal vertebrae, then that can start to impinge or compress onto the spinal cord itself. This can lead to a variety of different signs and symptoms, including leg weakness, tingling sensations, urinary and or fecal incontinence. So an inability to properly control urination and defecation, and paralysis may also occur in severe cases. Please check out my full lesson on prostate cancer if you want to learn more about risk factors, how it's diagnosed, and how it's treated. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and hope to see you next time.